Good morning. Hello. Hi. Larissa. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I told everybody that you were here getting ready for the yeah. call. Your name. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're trying to figure out what's happening here. Okay. You're going to let them in, Heather, and I will just start. Yep. You can go. So where are these other people? I just don't see them. You don't see them. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, even though I don't see all of you, I want to welcome you to our session uh, where we would like to introduce ourselves as the board of directors for Nanda International and tell you a little bit about the initiatives that we have going on this year and invite you to uh, contribute your suggestions, your ideas, your questions about how, how we work. I have a few slides, but I would like to also introduce our board of directors. We have some people still trying to connect. Technology is always a wonderful thing, but it doesn't always work reliably everywhere um, at a time when we want to. I'm sure that you understand all of that. But I am um, very proud to be uh, the president of Nanda International now, and we have a wonderful uh, board of directors. I'm so proud to have them be working with them. Uh, Hortensia Hildago, who is trying to log in from Mexico, Miriam Rodriguez Montfort from Spain, who manages manages to keep us on track with the money and uh, be true to what we say in our meetings. Uh, Dorothy Jones, who could not be with us this morning, who is the director of the Gordon Program for Knowledge Development and Clinical Reasoning, and Heather, who is our chief executive of the work um, of our operationally, but, but in volunteers for our organization and committed to uh, advancing the use of nursing diagnosis and clinical decision making in various areas. So Camila Taco Lopez from Brazil is the director of our diagnosis development uh, committee. Anna Maria Napoleo, who, who was from Brazil and our newly elected director of education and clinical innovation. Thank you for joining us, Anna Maria. Uh, Christine Spisla, who is actually in the air, um, working on an informatic, going to an informatics conference where she will be, as always, advocating for the consistent use of nursing diagnosis in um, electronic health records. And Sylvia Caldera, who is our director of research and also um, keeping us focused on what really is the evidence. In general, our focus in NANDA is to serve as a global force for the development and the use of nursing standardized language. Um, we want to, I mean, ultimately this all comes down to ensuring patient safety through evidence-based care. And our plan is to, that this is useful in helping to improve the healthcare of all people. There are a number of things that go into managing an organization and we always are thankful that we have Heather who not only has the history of our organization at hand but is managing um, the improvements in technology, <clears throat> providing some oversight on the website and some of our social media efforts, looking at updates in staffing, what kind of staffing we might need to manage membership, manage fundraising efforts for the organization, just daily operations. And soon we expect that there, there will be some journal updates as every three years we renegotiate the contract for the um, International Journal of Nursing Knowledge. And um, we are now looking at proposals now. Our board of directors, very busy looking at not only um, uh, diagnosis development 
informatics research, as well as education. And I I do have a few, few additional slides, but I'd like to turn this over to the directors now to speak to each of their areas. And Heather, I don't know if you wanna at least begin make a comment about the informatics since we have, uh, Christine is not here and you know probably a little bit more about um, what we've been doing with big data. Sure, uh, we have several initiatives that are uh, underway right now with uh, informatics. Uh, Christine is incredibly well known in the nursing informatics area worldwide, and she leads the uh, nursing reference group for SNOMED, uh, which is a monthly meeting that allows us to come together as a variety of terminologies um, and users of terminologies to talk about what we need in SNOMED, how to use uh, reference terminologies and interface terminologies uh, to advance nursing uh, visibility in patient records. So she's very involved in that. She has a small committee and I know she's looking for some more members uh, because there's a, a big task uh, at hand right now, which is that the informatics committee is responsible for uh, developing a reference set for all of our new diagnoses, which will be in the new book uh, coming out. So she has, they have to develop the reference to link to what's in SNOMED or to identify for SNOMED that they need to add some terms. And then they have to make some justification as to why we need those terms. Um, so, so that's an involved uh, process that she's going to need some help with. And we are just working within our own database to create as many connections to other standardized terminologies as possible. So uh, I think many of you probably know we have an initiative to link MeSH terms, the medical subject heading terms, to NANDA terms wherever possible. Um, but we are also, you know, we will be moving into then how do we link the SNOMED terms within our own database so that when we are uh, providing that database to users that comes preloaded for them so they don't have to do that work themselves. So there's a lot of work coming up in the future. And if you do have an interest in informatics, uh, uh, we will be putting out a call for members of committees soon. And I know that uh, Christine would love to hear from some of you. Thanks, Heather. I just want to make another comment and that is um, about our major objectives for this year. And to some extent, these transcend every year, but for, for right now, I think we've been talking a lot more about uh, strengthening clinical decision-making. Some of you may have noticed um, Heather making a call out for thinking about how we teach nursing diagnosis in the most recent newsletter. Um, certainly we want to focus on science and what really is the evidence base behind our practice. We do many studies around nursing diagnosis and its association with practice, but we must drill down a little bit more to say, is it the label, how, how are people actually using it to arrive at a particular nursing diagnosis? But as Heather mentioned, we're looking to expand our membership, be much more inclusive. We get many ideas from even our most recent national con international conference and building partnerships with other people who have ultimately the goal of improving standardized, the use of standardized language um, to ultimately improve patient care. Um, I am gonna st stop there and turn it over to um, Camila uh, to talk a little bit about diagnosis development. And please, any of you who have questions, feel free to enter them in the chat and we will try to take them as they come up um, or address them if we haven't at the end. Camila. Hi everyone, can you hear me? I'm Camila Takao. I am a professor at the Federal University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, and I have been the chair of the Diagnosis Development Committee since 2019. In our committee, we receive submissions and revisions of diagnosis. We um, contact content experts and revise these submissions. We give feedback, provide feedback to the authors, 
and we at some point provide some consulting on the process of um, uh, updating diagnosis, revising diagnosis, and finally we slot them in the taxonomy and then these diagnoses are published in the classification. Uh, I also serve as a book editor. Right now we are finalizing the book editing work and we have several new diagnoses, several additions. We have some removals of diagnosis. We have over 70 um, uh, label changes for our diagnosis. We have over 30 brand new diagnoses. And we, we started um, a work in our last edition of phrase editing. So the diagnostic components that you see, we try to make them as clear as possible and we continue to do this work in this edition. So you can expect these linkages with the MESH terms, phrases that are more concise and more clear and uh, more consistent throughout the, uh, the classification. And we will also have um, opportunity for collaboration of new members at the DDC. So we'll, you will receive uh, this news and hopefully you can collaborate with us. We collaborate with all of the other committees. So for the next two years, we expect to collaborate a lot with Dr. Silvia Caldeira and the research committee on um, updating the level of evidence for our diagnosis. We also expect to collaborate a lot with Dr. Ana Maria Napoleon and the education committee. So we can think of content on how to advance the nursing diagnosis validation studies, how to understand and spread the work on validating diagnosis and increasing their level of evidence. And we also have the challenge of looking at our taxonomy and thinking together of how uh, to improve it and to make it more clear, to make sure that the domains we have right now, the classes we have right now are well defined and really encompass the content that we have in our classification. So hopefully some of you can join us in our committees and it will be very welcome and we can work together and improve our classification. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Camila. You. Anna Maria, um, I want to know if you want to comment at this point. I Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. My hesitation. My hesitation. My hesitation. Uh, 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 thank you, Laura. Uh, my name is Ana Maria Napoleão. I am an associate professor in in in, in a uh, Brazilian federal university, also called the Federal University of São Carlos in the state of São Paulo. I have been a professor here for 20 years in undergraduate and master's and doctoral courses. Uh, I'd been in the management of our university hospital from 2015 to 2021. And recently I succeeded Dr. Susan gallagher Lepak as Director of Education and Clinical Innovation of Nanda International. And uh, as you may know, we are setting up uh, the, the Education Committee to work on specific projects that aim to develop creative educational produ products to improve the clinical application of nursing diagnosis. Uh, more generally, our projects for the next few years will include uh, a course on how to te teach Nandai nursing diagnosis, aimed at professors and nurses responsible for continuing education services in health institutions, and um, also the creation of a podcast channel 
uh, with uh, Nanda Eyes Nursing Diagnosis Approaches, uh, fo focusing on education and clinical proxy. And uh, also, we intend to work uh, in developing strategies to disseminate information on Nanda Eyes Nursing Diagnosis for clinical nurses in the work environment through specific folders and bundles and things like that. Um, I hope you apply to join the education committee. And anyway, uh, it will be always a pleasure to exchange experiences and ideas about education and clinical innovation. You will be very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Anna Maria. Again, please feel free to add to the chat if you have any qu specific questions. Um, both Camila and Anna Maria now have mentioned our outreach for members, and we will be sending a formal call out so that you can submit your uh, letter of interest and maybe your CV to tell us what your um, interests are. Um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, Dr. Caldera, turning to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure to talk to you all and to welcome you to this uh, board meeting, uh, open board meeting. It's really good to be with you all. I'm Sylvia Caldera. I'm Associate Professor at the Catholic University based in Lisbon, in Portugal. And at this moment, I'm the director of the research committee. I'm not alone in this uh, committee. I have, I work with more six people from Spain, Ireland, um, and uh, Brazil and Italy. And it's good to work with them. So it's, uh, it's uh, I don't work alone and that's really good and uh, provides a, uh, um, a sense of being belonging to this association also. So as, a as the director of the research committee, I must be aware of the duties of the research committee and that is in the bylaws of the organization. And um, when I start my, my period as in this role, I need to work um, and to see um, also with other directors, with uh, Dr. Camilla Takao, at, at that moment with the, the director of the education committee, because we really work together to see how research can be um, used or better used to improve nursing diagnosis. And that's the point. Um, we had uh, three main goals for this period, but the main topic, and I had some slides to share, but I'm not unable to share, and that's okay. Uh, the question you know, is, where are, where are we now? Uh, and it's not the song, where are we now? It's not the song, it's the question. Because it's very important for us to, um, to, to look and to uh, think deeply uh, what have we been doing so far and where do you want to do do where what is the next path this is very important to stop and to think because sometimes you just do things you know you we just do do and do and do because the others do and everyone says and we need to stop and to ask what for what are we doing what is the next step and it, this was the main question, and this was the main trouble, I would say trouble, but we always look at this as an opportunity because I'm a I, I can share with you that one of the main tasks of the research committee was to review the level of evidence of each nursing diagnosis. I believe I'm talking to people that use NANDA, and uh, I'm seeing we have 14 participants. I know one of those participants, it's a Portuguese PhD student. And uh, probably you, you use NANDA and you see a number 
uh, in the classification that tells you that's the level of evidence. Then you go to chapter four of the same book and you say, let me check what is this level of evidence. And then we start thinking, what is this? So we went through the literature, we did literature reviews to each nursing diagnosis, and we asked in, to the databases, the scientific databases, what studies have been conducted on this nursing diagnosis. But we started asking this nursing diagnosis as listed in NANDA, because then we have other problems like the translations because the nursing diagnosis as listed in NANDA has one name, but probably when people translate into Portuguese and I'm Portuguese or another language and then back translate to publish, the terms came different. And these were really challenges that we need to go through. This is one thing I think it's interesting to share. And we have so many people doing these reviews and at the end, we found that uh, we have many nursing diagnoses that had no results. And this is not true because nurses do research on that. So we don't publish on that. So we need to publish more. And we need to send emails to Dr. Uh, Camila Tecau and uh, fill the form in the website and say, we did this. And I also, <laughs> sometimes I don't do that. I publish and I don't say to Dr. Camila Takao, please mind that I did this uh, study. And this is very important for us to keep, um, uh, to know what is doing, what has been doing and what is around the world because so many people are doing research on nursing diagnosis. Another thing that we find found is that um, some nursing diagnosis um, need to are always validated in the same population and some if a nursing diagnosis is a, a judgment um, towards a human response that human response is not connected to the disease or the illness so we need to do research in different populations and the third thing is that um in general, we need to increase our research, namely the type of studies that we use to validate nursing diagnosis. And it's interesting to see there are different phases. We have the fairing phase, then we have the concept analysis phase, then now we have many studies uh, more, uh, ro more um, how do I say, robust, uh, robust and more... Um, um, in experimental um, perspective, and we need to do that. We need to have more evidence on the nursing diagnosis, not only on a descriptive uh, uh, way. So, as you can imagine, the research committee has many challenges now. Um, we have a level of evidence framework that uh, is... Um, it's, it's like a, a guidance for, for understanding the level of evidence, but it's a guidance and it's very important for us to look at each level of evidence and to see, okay, what type of study can I do? Can I plan? Can I conduct to increase the knowledge on the, lab, on the nursing diagnosis? That's the challenge to increase the knowledge on that nursing diagnosis. I, I don't call it level of evidence because, and this is the last thing I want to do, two more things. One is I would like to, to, to share uh, this question. What is the level of evidence? What is evidence today when we know that the evidence uh, as we define came from the studies but if we look at the not at the bright side of the science but the other side of the science what is there being published and all that is behind that so the evidence it's not just a scientific thing and we need to look carefully when we 
say level of evidence. So at this moment, I think the research committee is working on developing the knowledge, what the nurses know, know knowledge on each nursing diagnosis. That's why we are uh, planning in the next year for free um, uh, online research uh, series in uh, December, February, April, and June to share with you the research committee. We have four different participants. Uh, it's a one hour meeting to share with you different types of studies that we can conduct to increase the knowledge on each nursing diagnosis. We, I don't call it level of evidence, uh, to, to the knowledge on each nursing diagnosis. And the last thing I want to uh, say to you, it's very important for us, if you are conducting research on nursing diagnosis, please fill the form, please help us in uh, having a map, a more complete map on our registry, because that helps us not only in, for members to see what is doing internationally on nursing diagnosis, but also when Dr. Camilla wants to find some expert in any nursing diagnosis and having the registry complete, you are um, supporting also Nanda in increasing our uh, work. So you are more than welcome to collaborate and I'm totally happy to answer your questions. Thank you. I just posted the link for the registry in the, in the chat. And I wonder, Sylvia and Camila, if you would recommend people who have a passion or an interest in developing nursing diagnoses, do you see that these webinars that are coming up by your group as being helpful to them in organizing their thoughts? Should they bring a concept to you and to this workshop and talk about whether or not they can develop it further with evidence? Yes, yeah, yeah. and thank you, Laura, for your question. These webinars are, are being planned to be a maximum one hour, but with discussion. The goal is to uh, provide discussion and specific uh, examples, you know, uh, specific studies that have been conducted, sharing difficulties, uh, sharing uh, uh, opinions, sharing ideas. It's not just, um, it's, not, it's not like a class, right? It's, it's a, a more um, interactive uh, webinar. Um, and many of you have heard me speak that a lot of times people think they have to have a perfect diagnosis. They put all this work into it and then they submit it online and then they feel bad because maybe it isn't immediately accepted. When in fact, all of these things take time and thought. And as you said, it might work in one population, but the strength of the diagnosis is whether or not it is stable across all settings. So if I see spiritual distress it is not the it's not different in spain than it is in portugal there may be some cultural influences in how we plan the care for that patient but the phenomena itself is not um we're, we're as human beings we're not quite as different as sometimes we think just because we live in different places so i just wanted to encourage people to come forward. They don't have to have a perfect product when they come. They have to have an idea, something they saw, they visualized in a patient. Um, Camila, do you, what are your thoughts about that? Yes, we, um, in addition to receiving submissions of revisions or new diagnosis, we also receive questions of when people are still planning for their studies on a, a diagnosis. They write to us sometimes. They ask if we are aware of other people who are working with that concept. Sometimes we do. And then we ask permission from both sides to see if we can put them in contact and they end up working together. There are groups, um, international groups that have been born 
from these uh, collaborations that we were able to to manage and uh, and put people to work together. And um, sometimes when we see that there might be some misunderstanding on what a nursing diagnosis is, on what the process uh, to follow is, we are able to provide some insight. Of course, the person is absolutely free. The researcher is absolutely free to follow, follow their own path and their beliefs um, um, on what they understand is a nursing diagnosis. But we are also able sometimes to provide them with some insight on how uh, the questions that we would make before starting working with that specific concept. And when we receive a submission that is um, done, a product that is already done, a, a problem-focused diagnosis, a risk diagnosis, and we do not feel that it is um, ready to be in the classification, we don't just say this is not approved. We provide them with explanation on the points that led to it not being accepted right now. So we also receive good feedback from authors on that, that uh, sometimes they disagree and they can also do that. And, but many times they agree and they say they understand and they say they will approach that in um, another way and then come back to us for submission. So it, it is not a uh, work that is easy to do because it's um, submission by submission and we receive uh, lots of them, but it's, it's also rewarding and it makes us feel closer to the researcher and maybe I, I think if you it makes them feel closer to us. Uh, did were you gonna did you have some other thoughts, Sylvia? Uh, I was just um, thinking as your example on spiritual distress, that is my main uh, uh, area of research and it's interesting that, Usually we think on some uh, human responses uh, associated to some people, some clinical setting. If I talk about spiritual distress, you may uh, start thinking on death, on palliative care, right. on dying on. And we did research on, for example, individuals under fertility treatments. And it's very interesting because then the... The finding characteristics are totally different, but, but the diagnosis is the same. And this is what we need to do to increase the knowledge on the nursing diagnosis according to the transition or the uh, uh, health condition that people are living and, it, and not reduce it only to one contest and one. And this opens really um, many, many, many doors and as opportunities for research. Uh, as for adolescents, for example, living, uh, for example, chemotherapy or spiritual distress on adolescents that uh, are with this, all these uh, gender uh, questions, for example, they, they, they question the meaning in life. They, so it's, it's an open, many open doors to to research and i think also the world is changing so the nursing diagnosis the list of 81 nursing diagnoses in the 70s in the last century have been as is as is been uh, growing and growing and growing and we, we have almost uh 30 uh 300 diagnoses so 267 nursing diagnosis yes. this is another question because the world changes other human responses are there and we need to to be uh, aware of that also yeah for sure i mean international uh, sometimes <laughs> as as camila said it is very complex it can be very frustrating even to have some of these discussions but in the end, it is very rewarding to think that we have language that we understand one another. And it is helpful to be able to even say to patients, 
this is what I think we need to work on together. What I mean, we talk about being patient-centered, nurses are patient-centered, but we have to be able to say these words to patients. It sounds like you are distressed. It sounds like you are feeling hopeless. It sounds like, um, what should we together do? Because that is so important to strengthening the nurse patient relationship. And so, and I don't want to go on about that because then we'll be here all day. But I, I think I want to welcome people into having a discussion. And I would also add a pitch from uh, Christine Spisler because I know many times um, a diagnosis has been approved and there is even research. And now we go to fit it into some box in the electronic record and it doesn't fit with the boxes that the electronic record people have uh, created. So we need to really think about how, how we all work together. And I think that's what we would like you to see, those of you who are in the audience, and those of you who may be working with other people who wanna know what does Nanda do? This is what we do. And I, I do wanna to turn to um, our treasurer, our secretary treasurer, because for sure, none of this gets done without money. And we, we do rely a great deal on the, any profits that are made from the book, any profits that are made from licensing. Um, but truly, in order to do this work, um, takes money and Miriam makes sure that we stay, stay in line and maintains a very strong connection with our foundation. Miriam, please, please comment. Cause I do, uh, you know, I count on you as the voice of reason, not, not only because you took over the spot after I had it, but. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. So hello, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure and an honor being in this session. And I must say that in this board of directors as well, my name, uh, as it was announced, is Miriam, and I'm the secretary, secretary treasurer of Nanda I. I have been developing this service now for two years. Uh, I am from Barcelona, Spain, and I work as a lecturer in community and family nursing, which is my field of, of specialty in the Blanquerna School of Health Sciences in Barcelona as well. So I must say that in any organization, there is a lot of work done behind the scenes that aims to ensure that proper functioning and development of the organization itself. Many figures collaborate in this work, and one of them is the secretary treasurer, it's me. Uh, the role of uh, the secretary treasurer consists of, in one side, carefully collecting the evidences and agreements of all the meetings of the board of directors in the form of minutes and guaranteeing optimal, and this is the second part, which is really important, financial management of the organization in close work with the executive committee in which the president, president-elect, and the CEO also participate as well as the bookkeeper occasionally. Um, so this, this, is, this takes a lot of, of uh, work in my role, but in addition, um, the secretary treasurer is part of the board of the Nandai Foundation, uh, where we meet monthly. And the foundation is the platform that devises ways to increase funding that will go towards developing more nursing research and knowledge. So this is really, really important. We were mentioning research, we were mentioning ways of increasing knowledge, but without funding, unfortunately, that is really, really tough and difficult. So we have this uh, uh, nice foundation that is working really hard to achieve this um, objective. And I want to share with you that we need you to uh, be aware of the existence of this foundation. And if you want to donate, that would be great. Or help us find, find uh, donors for this foundation. Um, the secretary treasurer also participates in those projects that uh, she can make a positive contribution. In my case, because my profile now is a lecturer, I have participated uh, in um, in the education task force in a visibility project for an educational model in teaching nursing diagnosis. 
I also uh, have met with the DCC task force in order to contribute, sharing my perspective on certain diagnoses. And I have also been a member of the scientific uh, committee of the Nanda Eye Conference, where we review aspects related to the scientific content of the conference. So it's a uh, never ending work, but it's like a really fulfilling work, I must say as well. And um, this is why we know that when we help an organization like this uh, move forward, we are also helping nursing move forward. And this means uh, improving research and improving nursing knowledge. So I just want to finish my small speech by saying, please uh, stay in touch with us, with me, if you need anything, and please donate to the foundation so we can move forward. Thank you. Um, I will put something in the chat about the foundation and the grant opportunities, although the button does not seem to, there it is. And I want to invite anybody to use the, um, the question and answer button if people have questions. Okay. Oh, I think this is from Larissa. I think so. I think so. It's not from you. <laughs> All right. Larissa, can you speak? She said she can't. She's she's not a panelist anymore. Okay, so Heather, are you um you just said something but you're muted. So she has to type in her her uh commentary because we can't the panelists or sorry the audience can't actually speak uh, you just have to type well you're typing larissa because of course i'm anxious to see your question i'm gonna post in the um the chat the the date of the next webinar we do offer these webinars regularly i happen to have it anna maria um, which is going to be on November 16th. And um, it's to look at, according to our website, um, the impact of standardized nursing terminologies on patient and organizational outcomes. Um, we do try to plan these so that they appeal to a wide variety of interests. If you have an interest in a particular topic, please again, send it to Anna Maria. And of course, if you would like to be on the committee, don't forget to volunteer for that. Um, but we're very interested in any comments that you might have. So let me just say, while Larissa, I mean, I actually, I think she's probably thinking about her her question and writing it in. Please, anyone else who feels free to um, write in their question, please do so. Heather, do you want to comment a little bit on the BC Scholars Program? Yeah, uh, we are actually, we have just finished, which it's hard for me to believe, uh, five years with the, the Gordon Program at Boston College. And uh, they are in the midst right now of a five-year evaluation of that program. So reaching out to all of the different uh, uh, scholars who have been and continue to be engaged in that, uh, that program. Uh, there are two new scholars that are uh, in right now. Uh, one, uh, both are from, both of them happen to be from Brazil. Uh, but we have had scholars from Spain, Italy, Africa, um, and the U.S. And so the, the goal of this program really is to provide uh, an academic link for NANDA International so that we have a, a place and a space for individuals who are um, looking for expertise or wanting to broaden their expertise in clinical reasoning, decision-making, uh, and certainly in the use of standardized terminologies um, at an academic institution. This is something we were asked for years and years, you know, couldn't, couldn't end to do this. And so we were very happy to do this 
And uh, for those of you who aren't aware, we did a call out for universities. Um, we had, I believe there were seven universities initially that uh, applied to be the, uh, the site. And in the end, Boston College was selected um, to be that site. Um, we are now at a point where we are starting to explore international collaborative um, sites as well. So that's something to keep an eye on in the future that we are in discussion about how that might look and what that might um, entail. So we're excited about that as well. And uh, Boston College, as part of our collaborative partnership, uh, helps us with conferences. So obviously they've hosted the last two conferences. Um, that we have put together a very um, nice kind of well-defined way of managing conferences. And uh, even as we move into a conference, which we'll be hosting at Dr. Caldera's University um, in 2025 in Portugal, um, Boston College will continue to be part of that, uh, providing us with some of those structures that they already have in place and supporting the conference um, with uh, some of those operational details that will make it easier for everybody else. So it's a, it's a wonderful partnership. And for those of you who are interested in, uh, you know, sandwich programs or postdoctoral programs, I encourage you to take a look at our site, which links to the Boston College site, um, to see what opportunities are there. So, um, so Larissa, Larissa, you could actually write your question in Portuguese and Camila could actually interpret it if you're yeah. struggling with it. <laughs> or you could call me on the telephone. We're so there is, a, there is a question. There's a question here about how to get involved with the research. Um, and so, and how, and how, how do, how, how do you do that? So, um, just as a general answer to that, there is going to be a call for members for all committees that will be coming out uh, very soon. Um, we have um, developed a form and all the committee uh, directors on the board are completing that form with what kind of skills they're looking for on their committees, what are the backgrounds of individuals that they're looking for, and uh, then those calls will go out and we ask that you, you know, kind of read through those, see what skills they're looking for. And if you feel you're a good match for certain committees, then you'll fill out that form and mail it to the appropriate uh, director. So if you're interested in research, you would send that to Dr. Silvia Caldera. And then once the call is closed, it will be open for 30 days. So at the end of that 30 day period, every department uh, or sorry, every committee chair director will kind of look at all the applicants that they have and given the number of positions that they have they will try to uh, match the applicants with the, ta the 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 traits that they're really looking for and every one of them that will have different uh, requirements for their committees in terms of maybe uh, particular skill sets that they're looking for and then uh, they will be able to announce those positions. So it will be coming out very soon. So keep an eye out for that. We will announce it on all of our social media channels. We'll announce it with a blog. We'll announce it in the newsletter. So you'll have multiple opportunities to see that uh, membership is open for all NANDA members to be involved in the committees. And, and actually, again, I would remind people to look at the link for the research registry, because if you have a research interest, but you're not necessarily yet doing research in that area, that's an opportunity for you to let other people who are doing research in that area to reach out to you. So <clears throat> all of these committees are pretty focused in their particular role. And if it doesn't necessarily match a particular you know, something in particular that you're trying to do, um, just go on to the research registry and express an interest. Am I right, Sylvia? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. I totally agree. And um, I think people should be, should follow the site and the news and, um, and um, apply for this uh, call. 
Now, I would be interested because we have a few minutes left um, to hear from people if they don't mind answering in the question and answer. How do they like to get their information about what's happening with Nanda? Um, many of you know we have a newsletter. We have a website. Um, you know, so how, how do people, because we know that we are also um, a multi-generational organization. We have nurses at all ages, nurses in all settings, um, particularly wanting to engage students and clinicians who can grow with the organization. And I'm curious if there are any suggestions and if you don't have them now, if you would share them in the future, that would be very helpful to us. Um, any comments by text or q and I wish we could see your faces. We'll have to do something about that, Heather. <laughs> All right. Um, just as a reminder, I think too, um, oh, we do have an upcoming, uh, another seminar on November 16th. Uh, it's the impact of standardized nursing terminologies on patient and organizational outcomes. Uh, it's a systematic review and meta-analysis. And um, it will be presented by Dr. Luca Bertocci. Luca was, uh, is one of the Gordon scholars. Uh, so he'll be providing his, uh, presenting his work. And so you can go to the link on the NANDA site under news and events and register for that uh, workshop. Uh, I've heard Lucas speak before. If you haven't had the opportunity, he's very good. Um, his work's very interesting. So I encourage everybody to, um, to sign up for that and thank Anna Maria for reminding me to say that. <laughs> so is that uh, Larissa that has her hand up? Seems to be. Okay, so Larissa, if you unmute, I think you should be able to talk now. She can't. Uh, this, is her, this is Hortensia. I'm oh, hi, Hortensia. Hortensia. <laughs> oh, I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, you're coming up as Laura. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, Hortensia, speak. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. Okay, this is uh, Hortensia. I'm a nursing professor from Mexico and a an, uh, proud owner of uh, member of Nanda I. And at this moment, I am the president-elect and I'm focused on working with the network groups uh, under the patronage and the compassion and kindness of Dr. Herman and Dr. Rossi. And they are guiding me quite uh, encouraging. And I, I really thank you. For that and uh, we are working hard to have network groups uh, already getting and in, informed in, in and with a format to to grow and to uh, increase their presence in the eye and as, as i said when i was a candidate i would like this uh, association to keep growing with a lot of members interested in language in nursing language but also we want to keep in touch and we would like to be uh, close to the network groups and to all the members. And also we would like to, to make you feel uh, that you are welcome and that you are belong, that you are part of Nanda I. And that is why you are so welcome. And uh, I am so happy to be um, in this position, this role at the moment. And I think that we have a lot of work uh, going and uh, coming, a lot of work, but it's gonna be uh, just an excitement adventure to keep working for Nanda I and to keep growing uh, nursing language. If we remember as soon as we start to use of nursing language, we are expressing what nurses do, do and what nurses are, are doing and they learn and they teach. So it is very important to keep using our taxonomy and of course, participating in all the, participating 
also, uh, if we can share with all of you, with all the members. So uh, in every time that I have uh, the opportunity to be a speaker, I, uh, I am so happy to invite everyone to, be a, to become a member of Nanda I, to learn and to teach, and also to become a part of the um, different committees. This is important because we have a, a lot of work to do, <laughs> so we are invited. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to direct myself to you. Uh, as I said, I'm a nursing professor in Mexico, and I travel a lot to speak in so many places, but uh, I also take the opportunity to speak about Nanda I. This coming Friday, I'm going to be in Mazatlan. I'm sorry, this is a beach in the uh, Pacific Ocean, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a great opportunity to speak about Nanda I and the use of the taxonomy, and as Dr. Caldera said, about the research going and about the developing of uh, diagnosis guided by uh, Dr. Takao. So thank you all. It is an honor uh, for me to be with this board and to, I, I'm the new one. So I was very welcome and uh, I thank you for that. And I thank you, Lara, for this opportunity to speak to the, in this webinar. Thank you. Also, uh, you cannot see my image, but I'm here and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, now we can see your name. I'm not really sure <laughs> why. When everybody signed on, they were signed on as Lara Rossi, and I couldn't really quite <laughs> figure that out because I knew I was here. But technology <laughs> yeah. is a beautiful thing, and I am very thankful for all of you who could attend. I hope you will feel comfortable keeping in touch you with us. Yourself, Laura. You can reach us, um, any one of us, on email if you have questions that you'd like to address. Oh, there you are with those beautiful, beautiful flowers. I just love them. Um, anyways, um, please send your suggestions along and please do go to the website and look at educational, um, actually, I'm going to add that as one last thing to the website, events. Oh. Pasting, not an easy thing. Oh. And now it's in another language. Anyways, we'll... We will send out the uh, the link if I don't know why all of a sudden I had it. This website what are you is, trying to do the link for the li link for the webinars. There's a whole list with Sylvia's dates as well. Here it is. Yeah, I got it. My mouse was acting up. Here you go. Um, so we hope to see all of you soon. Thank you for coming. Um, if there are no last questions, I think we'll convene for the night, for the for the for the day, for the day, wherever you are. Bye. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you.